Chinese. Oh. You can see the chicken here, right? Is that one right there? And it might be hard to notice in the video, but the car is shaking a little bit as well. So we're gonna find out why that is. The first thing we need to do is we need to get a OBD2 scanner. Now this is the check engine light, the codes for that are stored in the um, engine control unit. So what that means is that you can re use a generic OBD2 scanner. You, you don't necessarily need a manufacturer specific scanner. Most OBD2 scanners will be able to read the check engine codes, but it is better to have a manufacturer specific scanner because sometimes you, you might get more than one code, you will get a better description of, of the fold code. Um, in this case, we do have a scanner that's able to read uh, manufacturer codes. Um, but we'll go ahead and uh, plug it in. Now we need to find the OBD2 port and that's underneath the dashboard. So here most scanners will turn on on their own. That's what's happening in this case. And uh, what you want to do is you want to turn on the ignition. Right now we're completely off. We press start once and the dash lights turn on, right? The, uh, but do not not press the brake pedal otherwise you're going to start the engine. You don't want to have the engine running. If you're going to be diagnosing the car for a long time, you should have um, you should have a battery connected to the a battery charger connected to the battery. And now, because we're dealing with a check engine light, you want to go to System Selection and Engine Control Module. Now, if you have a basic OBD2 scanner, that's all you're gonna have. You, you're gonna have the engine control module. You won't even have the option to choose in these other modules. Press OK. Alright, so we go to read DTCs. Alright, so here um, we have a few codes. And uh, so this is important. The state right here is important because if your check engine light is on, the codes that are active are what are triggering it on. Um, these other codes passive, it means the engine, for example, engine coolant temperature sensor, uh, its circuit is high. Maybe at some point there was an issue that was replaced. Um, the codes, the check engine light, turned off on its own because after a few days the ECU just resets itself but the codes weren't actually clear with the scanner. So all these codes are um, passive. Um, it's good to write these down and keep them uh, but you can go ahead and erase them. So right here we have the turbo boost sensor. This also measures the temperature so to replace it's very easy and straightforward. You uh, first disconnect the connector, move that to the side and you move those two tabs out and there is a sensor. So you will take the new sensor, simply press it in there, make sure it's locked in place. And um, the other thing you want to make sure is that right here you have this O-ring. You want to make sure that that's still there. Uh, make sure that the old O-ring is not stuck in the hole and then you'll end up with two O-rings and you won't be able to push that in. You hear that click? Uh, it's no longer shaking. And, but the check engine light is staying on. Now the check engine light can reset on its own as long as there's no active codes. But it does not reset right away. It could take two, three days. For example, let's say if you had a loose gas cap and you tighten it, um, then it's not going to reset the check engine light right away. You drive it a few driving cycles. Within two, three days, it should reset on its own. And that code changes for, from active to passive or stored. But here we're going to connect our scanner and get to the ECU and see what codes we have. So engine control unit, press OK. Alright, so we're going to scroll down. Ignition it needs to be on. If you have a manual key, turn it to position 2, do not start the engine. So here we are. You can see all the codes. They change from active that we had earlier. Now they show as passive. Passive, passive, passive. So now we can go ahead and erase the code. Uh, again, if we do wait, if you just simply drive for a few days, the check engine light will um, turn off on its own. But since we have the scanner, we will go erase the codes.